assalamu alaikum students i am dr amara server and today's topic of discussion is peritoneum and peritoneal folds so let's start with the introduction of the peritoneum as you already know that peritoneum is the innermost layer of the abdominal wall it lines the walls of the abdomen and pelvic cavities and cover the organs within these cavities histologically it is a large thin serous membrane which is also called serosa consists of a layer of platinum mesothelial cells which secretes a serous fluid which lubricates the surface and make it more visible for the movements of the viscera so peritoneum is in the form of a closed sac which is invaginated by a number of viscera as a result it is divided into two layers an outer or parietal layer and an inner or visceral layer to make it more clear here is an example that if we assume this inflated balloon is peritoneum which is a closed sac and then we push the fist against this balloon this shows you that invagination of the organs and uh, you can see here uh, that the peritoneum is divided into two cavities an inner or visceral layer which surrounds the fist or viscera and an outer or parietal layer which lines the abdominal and pelvic cavities and in between these two layers this cavity is called the peritoneal cavity so here you can clearly appreciate that organs are not present in the peritoneal cavity these are present within the abdominal cavity and here are the two layers of the peritoneum the visceral layer or inner layer and the outer or parietal layer so the parietal layer lines the wall of the abdominal and pelvic cavities and its blood supply and nerve supply are the same as those of overlying body which is from the T7 to T12 and L1 and due to its somatic innervation it is pain sensitive layer while the visceral layer lines the outer surface of the viscera to which it is firmly adherent its blood supply and nerve supply are the same as underlying viscera while uh, visceral peritoneum evokes pain when viscera is stretched ischemic or distended so how would you define the peritoneal cavity it is a potential space between the two layers of the peritoneum which are visceral and parietal layers in the male it is a closed sac but in the female it is open because of uterine tubes uterus and vagina here uh, in this transverse section uh, you can again appreciate that uh, this is the invaginated viscera and sur surrounding layer of the peritoneum is the visceral layer while the uh, outer layer that lines the abdominal wall is the parietal layer of the peritoneum and in between these two layers is the peritoneal cavity peritoneal cavity is divided into two main sacs it is the greater sac and lesser sac or omental bursa and these two sacs communicate with each other through a through an opening which is called the epiploic foramen or foramen of winslow now look at this diagram uh, this is a sagittal section showing you uh, that peritoneum parietal peritoneum is lining the abdomino pelvic wall while the visceral peritoneum is covering the visceras now in between these two layers this whole empty space is the peritoneal cavity and this peritoneal cavity is divided into two sacs which is the greater sac and lesser sac this light blue area shows you the area of greater sac and this purple area is the lesser sac 
so here are few terms that explain the relationship between the viscera and the peritoneum uh, these are very important terms as uh, these are often asked during viva and so listen them carefully uh, first of them is the intraperitoneal viscera an organ to be said an intraperitoneal organ when it is completely surrounded by the peritoneum here in this diagram you can see this viscera is completely surrounded by the visceral peritoneum so this is an intraperitoneal organ or viscera students often make this mistake that intraperitoneal viscera means that are present in the peritoneal cavity i already show you and clear in my previous slide that no viscera is present in the peritoneal cavity these are present in the abdominal cavity so here is the list of the intraperitoneal viscera which are stomach superior part of duodenum jejunum ileum cecum vermiform appendix transverse and sigmoid colons spleen and ovary retroperitoneal viscera by definition retroperitoneal organs lie on the posterior abdominal wall and are covered by the peritoneum on their anterior surfaces only here in this diagram you can see that the organ or viscera is covered anteriorly by the visceral peritoneum and it is present behind the peritoneum so that's why it is called the retroperitoneal organ it is further uh, classified as the primary retroperitoneal organs and secondary retroperitoneal organs now the primary retroperitoneal organs are those organs which during organogenesis developed and remain outside of the parietal peritoneum these are kidney suprarenal gland aorta and inferior vena cava ureter and rectum in this transverse section you can see that kidneys inferior vena cava and aorta these are all present behind the peritoneum and the peritoneum covers only their anterior surface secondary retroperitoneal organs were initially intraperitoneal suspended by mesentery which is a fold of peritoneum and we will discuss it later in our lecture uh, through the course of the embryogenesis they became retroperitoneal as their mesentery fused with the posterior abdominal wall so only the interior surface is covered with the peritoneum these structures are pancreas head neck body while tail lies in the uh, splenorenal ligament duodenum second and third part and ascending and descending colon here again these diagrams showing you the retroperitoneal structures in which uh, kidneys ureters inferior vena cava and aorta are the uh, primary retroperitoneal uh, structures while the second part of duodenum pancreas ascending colon and descending colon are the secondary retroperitoneal structures now the subperitoneal viscera as the name indicate that organs that lie below the peritoneal lining are the subperitoneal organs now here in this diagram you can see this is the peritoneal lining and below this peritoneal lining uh, there is the urinary bladder seminal vesicles and prostate gland in male and uh, in this female uh, sagittal section you can see this blue lining is the peritoneal lining and below this lining is the uh, urinary bladder uterus cervix and vagina these are the subperitoneal organs 
there are two structures which are formed by the peritoneum these are peritoneal ligaments and the peritoneal folds uh, these are basically the reflections of the peritoneum which provide support to the organs either by connecting them with abdominal wall or to each other so uh, here is the uh, peritoneal ligaments which we will study briefly here because the details will be discussed in another lecture uh, these are two layered folds of peritoneum that connect solid viscera to the abdominal wall or to each other for example the liver is connected to the diaphragm by the falciform ligament the coronary ligament and the right and left triangular ligaments here in this diagram you can see the falciform ligament the coronary ligament and the right triangular and left triangular ligament which connect the liver to the diaphragm and the abdominal wall the another example uh, is the gastrosplenic ligament which connect the stomach to the spleen and the gastrophrenic ligament which connect the stomach to the diaphragm today we will discuss the folds of peritoneum in detail organs within the abdominal cavity need support to remain in place and this support is provided by folds of peritoneum which are reflections of peritoneum that help to suspend the organs within the abdominal cavity and such organs are mobile along with mobility these folds provide passage of vessels nerves and lymphatics now the uh, peritoneal folds are given various names uh, one of them is the omenta omenta is a plural term its singular is omentum and these are two layered folds of peritoneum that connect the stomach to an other viscera this is uh, further divided into greater omentum and lesser omentum the other one uh, is the mesentries now mesentries are two layered folds of peritoneum connecting parts of intestine to the posterior abdominal wall in general the name of the fold is made up of the prefix mes or meso followed by the name of the organ for example the mesentery of the small intestine and the transverse mesocolon a uh, fold of peritoneum uh, which attaches the transverse colon to the posterior abdominal wall and the uh, sigmoid col mesocolon and the meso appendix so we will discuss these terms in detail first of all is the greater omentum omentum is a latin word which means apron it is the largest peritoneal fold which hangs inferiorly from the greater curvature of the stomach it is a double sheet and each sheet has two layers of peritoneum so basically it is a four layered structure of peritoneum here in this diagram you can see the attachment of the greater omentum uh, you can see that anterior two layers descend from the greater curvature of the stomach to a variable extent and then fold it back on itself to form the posterior two layers which ascend up to the pancreas and then passes in front of the transverse colon and mesocolon and then they get attached to the transverse mesocolon at its root to form the gastrocolic ligament so this looks like an apron that is why it has a name of greater omentum in this sagittal section you can see that greater omentum is a four layered structure anterior two layers descend from the greater curvature to a variable extent and then they fold it back on itself to get attached with the transverse mesocolon contents of the greater omentum are the fat and right and left gastroepiploid vessels clinical significance first one and most important of them is the localization of infection 
as you all know that greater momentum is a four layered peritoneal fold which hangs down from the greater curvature of the stomach and due to its hanging part it is able to move within the peritoneal cavity so when there is any infection or a traumatic event occur in the abdominal cavity the greater momentum can wrap around the organs to localize inflammation and prevent peritoneal adhesions so due to this it is often referred to as the policeman of the abdomen because of its apparent ability to migrate to any inflamed area and wrap itself around the organ to wall off the inflammation next one is the greater omentum as a hernial plug the greater omentum has been found to plug the neck of a hernial sac and prevent the entrance of the coils of small intestine you have studied the hernia in detail so there is no need to repeat the hernia greater omentum in surgery surgeons sometimes use the omentum to buttress an intestinal anastomosis that it means that uh, it it is a, uh, it provides support to the intestinal anastomosis and in the closure of the perforated gastric or duodenal ulcers lesser omentum lesser omentum is a fold of peritoneum that connects liver to the stomach on the stomach the lesser omentum is attached to the lesser curvature of the stomach and first inch of duodenum and to the liver it gets attached to the fissure for the ligamentum venosum and the porta hepatis on the inferior surface of the liver you can see this l shaped attachment of lesser omentum this one is the fissure for the ligamentum venosum and the porta hepatis now the portion of the uh, lesser omentum between the stomach and the liver is called the gastrohepatic ligament while the portion between the liver and the duodenum is called the hepatoduodenal ligament lesser omentum also forms the anterior wall of lesser sac contents of the hepatoduodenal and hepatogastric ligaments which are the portions of the lesser omentum so first the hepatoduodenal ligament contains portal vein bile duct hepatic artery which, is, which are the portal uh, portal triad and uh, lymph nodes and lymphatics the hepatic plexus of nerves while the hepatogastric ligament contain the right and left gastric vessels the gastric lymph nodes and lymphatics and branches from the gastric nerve here is this diagram you can see the par, uh, the portion of the uh, lesser omentum between the liver and the duodenum is called hepatoduodenal ligament and it contains the portal triad along with lymph nodes and lymphatics and uh, hepatic plexus of nerves while the portion between the stomach and the liver is called the hepatogastric ligament and it contains the right and left gastric vessels transverse mesocolon is a double layered fold of peritoneum Uh, that reflected from the posterior abdominal wall and suspends the transverse colon in the abdominal cavity two layers from the posterior abdominal wall reach on the posterior surface of the transverse colon cover it and then upper layer becomes continuous with the posterior layer of the greater omentum uh, to which it is adherent while the lower layer continues with the peritoneum of the posterior abdominal wall here in this diagram you can see that a uh, transverse colon has been removed and uh, this is the line of attachment of transverse mesocolon uh, which starts from the second part of the duodenum and crosses the head neck uh, and body of the pancreas and it reaches up to the upper pole of the kidney 
root of transverse mesocolon. It means uh, where the transverse mesocolon gets attached. Transverse mesocolon gets attached in the form of an oblique line which passing from the anterior aspect of second part of duodenum. Here you can see second part of duodenum and this oblique line starts from the second part of duodenum and then over the head and neck of pancreas above the duodenojejunal flexure over the upper pole of the kidney to the splenic flexure now this oblique line shows you the attachment of transverse mesocolon now the contents of the transverse mesocolon it contains the middle colic vessels together with the branches of superior mesenteric plexus along with lymphatics and regional lymph nodes. Here again you can appreciate the transverse colon and the transverse mesocolon that suspends the transverse colon and uh, transverse mesocolon contain the middle colic vessels and branches from the superior mesenteric artery. Here you can see the transverse colon is enclosed between the two layers of the transverse mesocolon. Here you can clearly appreciate the two layers, upper and lower layers of the transverse mesocolon which encloses the transverse colon. Mesentery of small intestine. It is a broad fan shaped fold of peritoneum which suspends the coils of the jejunum and ileum from the posterior abdominal wall. Root of mesentery. As you already know, that duodenum is the retroperitoneal structure. So the root of mesentery gets uh, attached to from the duodeno jejunal flexure on the left of the second lumbar vertebral body to the right sacroiliac joint at the ileocecal junction. It means root of mesentery gets attached from the duodenojejunal flexure up to the ileocecal junction and its line of attachment is from left to right at the level of second lumbar vertebral body up to the right sacroiliac joint. The attached border of mesentery is 15 cm in adults. Here you can see the attached border while the intestinal or free border is 6 m when cover intestinal loop and is thrown into folds. Its two layers contain superior mesenteric vessels. Here in this diagram where intestinal loops have removed, you can see the attachment of transverse mesocolon and the root of mesentery. Uh, this is the line of attachment of transverse mesocolon which, uh, which is in the form of an oblique line starting from the second part of duodenum and passes in front of the pancreas up to the upper pole of the kidney. And here is uh, the attachment of the root of mesentery uh, which gets attached uh, to the duodenojejunal flexure up to the ileocecal junction and uh, it is uh, from left to right from the uh, level of the uh, vertebra L2 to the right sacroiliac joint. And the root of mesentery contains the superior mesenteric vessels. Distribution of fat is variable in mesentery. Uh, it is most abundant in the lower part of the mesentery while upper part contains less fat which tends to accumulate near the root. Near its intestinal border, it leaves oval or circular fat-free translucent areas or windows. 
Now here you can see near the intestinal border these oval fat free areas or oval windows are present in the mesentery. Now the contents of the mesentery are the ju uh, jejunal and ileal branches of the superior mesenteric artery accompanying vein. Autonomic nerve flexes, lymph nodes and lymphatics and connective tissue with fat. Here you can see the root of mesentery which is the attached border of the mesentery and it contains the branches uh, of the superior mesenteric artery and veins. And here is the intestinal border which is attached to the loops of the intestine and it is thrown into folds and it provides great mobility to the intestine. Sigmoid mesocolon. It is a triangular fold of peritoneum which suspends the sigmoid colon from the pelvic wall. Here in this diagram you can see the sigmoid colon along with the sigmoid Mesocolon, which is a triangular fold of peritoneum. When you turn the sigmoid colon, you can see the attachment of root of sigmoid mesocolon, which is in the form of inverted V. Apex of this inverted V lies on the left ureter. Here is the left kidney and the left ureter. The apex of V lies on the left ureter while the left limb is lies along the left external iliac artery and the right limb attached to the uh, posterior pelvic wall at the level of vertebra S3. The sigmoid vessels lies in the left limb of root of sigmoid mesocolon while the right limb of sigmoid mesocolon contains the superior rectal vessels, nerves, lymph nodes and lymphatics. Mesoappendix Mesoappendix is a triangular fold of peritoneum which extends from the terminal part of the ileum to the appendix. Here you can see this one is the terminal part of the ileum and a fold of uh, peritoneum extends between the ileum and the appendix. It has, uh, it has an attached border which is attached to the appendix and a free margin. And this free margin contains the appendicular artery. Clinical correlates. Now here are a few terms you should know. Uh, laparoscopy, it is the examination of peritoneal cavity under direct vision using an instrument called laparoscope. Laparotomy, it is the opening up of the abdominal cavity by a surgeon. An important clinical correlate is the peritonitis, which is the inflammation of the peritoneum. Causes of peritonitis can be number one, when bacterial contamination occurs during laparotomy, number two, when the gut is traumatically penetrated or ruptured as a result of infection and inflammation, for example, during appendicitis, allowing gas, fecal matter, and bacteria to enter the peritoneal cavity, the result is infection via the uterine tubes in females and from the blood. Patient can present with symptoms of severe abdominal pain, nausea or vomiting, fever and constipation. And uh, on examination, you can found the tenderness or rebound tenderness. What is rebound tenderness? If you press your fingers on the inflamed area and sudden uh, suddenly remove your fingers then patient feels a sharp pain this is called the rebound tenderness you can also note uh, increase in the tone of the anterolateral abdominal muscles because muscle guarding is also present in acute inflammation 
so that's all about it please drop it thank you